highest he's been on the one-year list. He's actually 11th, so that tells you this season his form has been good. And just to remind you, Judd Trump and Joe O'Connor is the match on the second table. I think they've not been introduced, actually, so that's going to happen now. Trump, of course, won this title, uh, the first staging back in 2012. It's actually 12 years to the day since he became world number one for the first time, Judd Trump. And, of course, he's back there now after the win in Saudi. Although, in fact, he was there before that. But that has really cemented his place. Joe O'Connor, we know uh, how difficult opponent he can be. Mark Selby found that out to his cost, of course, at the Crucible, where O'Connor beat him on his debut. This time of the morning in the UK, he's normally doing sort of martial arts and gym work, but uh, on the other side of the world, it's all about snooker. Judd Trump, remember, has been in the quarterfinal of every tournament in 2024. Of course, he would have to win two matches to get to this one, but Joe O'Connor, he has a certain reputation for knocking out big names. He beat Neil Robertson, didn't he, in the Scottish Open semi-finals a couple of years ago. But Trump was uh, pretty serene yesterday. He beat Sanderson Lamb 6-0. And uh, had a century. <laughs> Discovery Plus will have Judd Trump, Joe O'Connor for you. Can Trump progress in yet another tournament? If he were to win this event, he would have earned a million pounds this season already. So that just tells you an extraordinary run he's been on. Day three of Snooker's International Championship in Nanjing, China. Ronnie O'Sullivan once again centre stage in this session. He's already beaten Mick Nutcher and Her Guo Chang. Standing in his way today, Pang Zhang Zhu, the world number 26, recent semi finalist in Belfast. And uh, Neil falls alongside me. We thought Her Guo Chang might be a tough opponent. O'Sullivan in the end, though, came through pretty comfortably, didn't he? Yeah, I thought he did. I thought he played pretty well against a very promising opponent. And, of course, in Panjin Su, you've got the same. Somebody playing well, as you pointed out. He's been in good form. And uh, what a shot to start with. But he has been in excellent form. Took Kyron Wilson close in Northern Ireland. Had a good win, as you mentioned, against Elliot Slesser, who had also been playing well. So a lot points to this being another difficult match for Ronnie O'Sullivan. And I agree that he did look sharp yesterday in the end. He played the usual attacking brand of snooker, O'Sullivan. Didn't sort of hold back or... Anything like that, he was the more positive player in the end of the two. And uh, we'll see how this one goes. But it's a very interesting game. You've got, there's a lot to like about Pang Jun Su, the style of player, how hard he works, how he's progressing, slowly but surely. An outstanding opening red, wasn't it? That he knocked in there and screwed back. And now he's at the other end of the table. And not a flair player, but as I say, very organised, very still on the shot. 14. Yes, and one of 10 Chinese players in this round. It's the round of 32, so it's basically a third of the field. Of course, he beat Neil Robertson in Belfast in the quarterfinals. That was a terrific finish, the way he won the last two frames. And uh, made it tough for Wilson, Kyron Wilson. 6-4 it was to Kyron there.
Well, he had a couple of very narrow defeats in the space of a few days earlier, didn't he? The English lost to Mark Selby. And lost to Chris Wakelin as well. In fact, the Wakelin match was in the English, where he was a long way in front and the decider missed an easy ball. Was beaten right at the end on the last black, and he did the same against Selby. He was a mile in front of the decider. Selby cleared to win it from 50 plus behind, and that happened in the space of a few days. So, I suppose what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, and it seems like he's regrouped. He had that win that Dave just mentioned in a close finish, so. You know, you've got to learn from your defeats and become back a more powerful player. I think he's capable of doing that. Certainly. I don't think he's got any interest in trying to reach across and play that red to left corner that he's close to. So he's running away. Playing safe. And he is capable of keeping O'Sullivan out away from the table because he's fairly deliberate in his style. Yeah, he just, uh, when he was in there, just slightly overran red to black, left himself low, didn't finish nice on a red. Of course, he's coming on in a way to O'Sullivan's table, isn't he? Third uh, day in a row he's been on this session on this table, so he knows how it's playing. Wanted to avoid that green. Yeah, he, he, both matches, I think, there was just a moment in the middle of the match where it seemed his concentration went a little bit, but he got it back both times. Remember, it was 4-3 at one point against Mink, but uh, pulled away very, very impressively. Fascinating session. I mean, John Higgins, Matthew Stevens, which is out on... Table five, that was the UK Championship final 26 years ago. <laughs> and here they are in Nanjing all these years on, playing each other again. Uh, not this time, and actually it wasn't a very well played shot because the cue ball, had the red gone in, would have been lost below the black. And he wouldn't necessarily have been able to continue the break. Yes, he looked dangerous yesterday, O'Sullivan, which of course he's, you know, he's got everything, hasn't he? But there's no getting away from it. His strength has always been his ability to score heavily, the greatest break builder we've ever seen. So that's where his game is. It's all the other parts of it just a, an add-on to that. And he was scoring well. He scored well in his first match against McNichirat, but I think he played better yesterday. It was a more of a stern test, I felt, against Hergo Chang. Yeah, I mean, scoring in general has been good in this tournament. 28 centuries we had yesterday, 18 on the first day. So it tells you that conditions are certainly favourable. And if they're favourable, then this man has got to be dangerous. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I made the point yesterday that with the tables playing like this, if O'Sullivan stays in, he might sort of notch up his 16th maximum break if he if he wants to. He hasn't always shown much interest in it, but... Something of a drought, if you like, for him. Nine years since he last made one. That's in a professional match, of course. 15. Because the tables are playing well and he looks to be in form. He's just got to ensure this black goes in. Slightly awkward queuing close to the red. And of course, with everything on, this has to drop.
22. Twenty-three. He did something quite unusual yesterday in the interview with Wilson and Gator. He's actually talking himself up slightly, which is normally the opposite of what he does. He's often very self-critical, but he was saying in terms of sort of who the audience want to watch, that he ticks all the boxes, which I, I don't think you can argue with. In terms of how he plays and the kind of interest there is in him as a person as well, and obviously the, the record of success he's had. But he doesn't always speak about himself like that. Well, there you go. That pocket, not big enough for that shot. He wasn't ideal on that black, was he? So Pang gets a golden chance here in this first frame. Yeah, what a chance it is now. This really is one he has to take. One. Nine. What an opportunity. It's not a, an awkward ball. Actually, I must correct something I said earlier. It's six years since O'Sullivan's last one for seven competitively, not nine. But um, it was against Alan Taylor in the English. He just made one prior to that against Elliot Slesser, but there's been 63 since O'Sullivan's last, so it's still a long time by his standards, but not as long as I made out earlier. Anyway, back to this frame. There is a real Thank determination you. about Pang Jin Su, and he took him close in that World Championship match that Dave mentioned. Lost 10-7 on debut. It was a really tough match for him to be playing O'Sullivan, of course. That's a good shot to get on that red, because that could have gone wrong. It could have screwed to the side cushion there. The leader 23, 22. so two reds and blacks will be certainly enough. Twenty-three. I think he prides himself on his cue ball control. I think he is a nice player when he's in amongst them. Beautiful shot. I think he, what he is, he's not the most gifted player coming through, but 30. sometimes that can work in your favour because he knows he has to put a lot of work in to get to where he wants to be. Sometimes the really gifted and talented players, they don't work very hard. 31. Here's a kind of contrast to someone like C. Wee in terms of just the aesthetics, by the way, C's won the first frame against Jack Lazowski. It takes all sorts, though, and if Pang pots this pink, it looks like he's won this frame, and O'Sullivan was nicely in. 32. He's left himself. It wasn't an absolutely regulation black. He still sort of fancy him for it, but he didn't pot it. 37. And he's been punished. Would like this red in as well to kill the frame off for sure. Yeah, he's a dogged uh, competitor, and he must be full of confidence after the run uh, in Belfast to the semis. He also got to the last 16 in Riyadh at the Saudi Arabia Masters, which is a big money tournament. In fact, CJ, we beat him there, 6-5. 
43. 45. So Pang was in first. It went wrong. Missed a long red. Gave O'Sullivan a chance. O'Sullivan missed a black. Pang has done the rest. And he leads here in Nanjing. 1-0. Now, table two is another interesting one. They're all interesting, actually, today. But this is Judd Trump and Joe O'Connor. And Joe O'Connor 